in 2019, I was in Germany and Andrew Tate bought me tickets to fly to Romania to go discuss business and then to fly back to Canada. And the reason I went was because in 2019, when you Googled Andrew Tate, he came up as a millionaire kickboxer. He had ideas about a subscription platform for me and for you. And I think part of the way, because of how, how I grew up, I basically said yes to opportunities and I didn't see a reason to not go talk to a millionaire about how he made money. Mm -hmm. And I also got the benefit of a ticket home. Mm -hmm. And I was also already in Germany. Mm -hmm. So I didn't see a reason not to go. That's also probably partly because I used to say yes to any opportunity, which I also think is part of the reason why I'm successful now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So anyway, um, I went there. From my experience, I met Andrew and I met, met his brother Tristan. They were very nice to me. Mm -hmm. Like they were nice to me. We had a fun time. They're, the reason that there's a rumor, there's a rumor online that we hooked up or we slept together or something. That didn't happen. I've told people that numerous times. It's not like I was a 20-year-old yeah, well, like girl cast like enamored. Yeah, well people like to online too. It's one of the things I've really seen that the troll demons like to go after women on that front, right? And so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's really so vicious, it's like, nasty, it, it, backbiting behavior. And it doesn't matter what I say. Mm -hmm. He's dispelled it, doesn't matter. Um, anyway, I haven't really commented on the situation because when I went, they were nice to me. Like, I, I actually had a pretty good time. He drove me around in his Bugatti and we saw castles, which was a weird experience. I remember telling him, he was a very, very, very smart person. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember telling him, you kind of remind me of a human shark. I don't know mm -hmm. like what mm -hmm. it was, but I was like, you're interesting. I don't know if it's your eyes or something, but you kind of remind me of a human shark. That was it. And then I flew home. Mm -hmm. So that like, that's the story on my end. Now, mm -hmm. I wanted to address that because people have been bothering me on Twitter for like two years or three mm -hmm. years because mm -hmm. of pictures of us uh, smoking cigars or having a vodka or something because I did. Mm -hmm. um, and it was fun. Mm -hmm. But that's it. That's the story on my end. Do you think you made any mistakes in, in, in that venture? Well, I had no idea he was going to become like the most famous person in the entire world. Mm -hmm. um, would that have changed it? N I don't think so. Like from knowing what I knew at the time, I would have still gone. Um, from knowing more about the webcam stuff. And he told me about, so once I was there, he told me about the webcam stuff. What did he not, tell not, you? Not in detail. Okay, I can't remember okay, like okay. that well, but it, it was something like women who want to do webcam stuff, like they already want to do it. Mm -hmm. I help them make way more money mm -hmm. and I take a percentage. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, okay. I didn't, I don't think, you know, I wasn't like, that seems like a wonderful business model. But I was like, if there are women who are already doing it and now they're making more money, I guess it doesn't seem, you know, it is what it is, mm -hmm. kind of. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know that until I got there. And then he he wanted to set up subscription platforms um, and said they could be very valuable. And, and we'd already been kind of looking into that because you'd had some issues with social media. I was worried you're going to get banned on sites. And so... I was already thinking it would be good to set that up with a subscription Well, platform. Gmail canceled me at one point. Yeah, I know. That about that time. Yeah, it was ridiculous. So mm -hmm. it was like, it would be good to learn how to do the subscription platform. Um, anyway, that, so I kind of went there to like scope things out. And it was a very interesting experience and they were nice to me. That's like the story. Yeah, well, the it, I hesitate to talk about Andrew Tate because I don't know that much about him, you know? But I'll, I'll tell you what I know and what I think, and people can take it for what it's worth. I mean, the first question is, why is he so popular? And the answer is, well, if you have to choose between being depressed and anxious and laying downstairs and covering yourself with Cheeto dust and looking at pornography and being timid and never going out, or, you know, listening to someone like Andrew Tate who says, like, get the hell out there and take the world, like... That's better. That's the shadow, right? Speaking in some ways, right? Like if you're naive and timid and anxious and intimidated and useless and resentful, there's going to be a bit of a monster that needs to call to you to say, you know, gird up your loins and get the hell out there in the world. And so it's better to be 
It's better to be a monster than a rabbit in some ways, right? Or at least there's some utility in the more monstrous predatory path that isn't there in the pathetic rabbit path. And that's partly because if you are a pathetic rabbit, you're going to become a predator anyways. You're just going to become a dark backdoor, backbiting, gossip mongering, resentful monster. Society's so, also pushing that on men in yes, particular. Yes, constantly. Like, be well, and weak. I knew, look, I knew, I knew, and I warned people repeatedly that if the culture kept emasculating men, that men who said, to hell with that, I'd rather be a monster, would become extremely popular. Now, and Andrew Tate is emblematic of that in many ways, because the first thing you got to say about him is that he's genuinely tough, right? So that's not a front. That's not a front. He's a fighter. And, and you can't take the courageous element of being a fighter away from someone who will actually step in the ring, right? And so now, and, and then you said Tate's intelligent, and what that means as well is that some of the things he says are going to be of value. Now, why he says those, that's a whole different issue. And so, you know, I think fundamentally that Tate serves his, his immediate self in this like impulsive, gratifying manner. And I think that goes along with his you know, look at me, I'm in a Bugatti. It's like, you know, fair enough, man, in some way.